Hello, all-star educators. Welcome to Tech Tuesday with Mr. N. Today, I'm gonna to share my top five essential Chromebook skills that every teacher should know. Hi, my name is Darren Nakakihara, and I'm a fourth grade teacher in Southern California. Welcome to Tech Tuesday with Mr. N. That's me. Every Tuesday, I'm gonna upload a, some kind of technology tip for you, and hopefully you could use them. So Chromebooks are super popular right now. My own school had well over 400 of them, and I'm sure my district has thousands. They're everywhere, right? Like the district likes them, schools like them because they're cheap, but teachers like them because they boot fast, apps load fast on them, and they work. So Chromebooks are a great fit for us. So what's a Chromebook? A Chromebook is really just a Chrome browser in a laptop form. It doesn't have a lot of storage on it, and if you're not connected to the internet, they're basically useless. But we love them because they're cheap and they work, right? So there are some essential skills that a teacher needs when teaching with Chromebooks. So let's dive into those right now. Tip number one, hand gestures. I'm not sure what kind of Chromebooks you use, but I'm sure this is pretty standard for all of them. They all work off of a trackpad, so you're not gonna hook up a mouse to it or an external keyboard. They look just like uh, regular laptops, right? With the trackpad. So you have to learn some hand gestures because you're not dealing with a mouse anymore, and a lot of your kids are gonna wonder. You're gonna wonder, they're gonna say, how do you right click? Well, right click is two fingers on the trackpad pressed at the same time, close together. Not like this, not like this, right? Two fingers. Things. I'll link um, something in the bottom where you can go to find other hand gestures that you can use with your Chromebooks. But essentially a right click and a left click, one finger, right? Is, uh, is an essential skill that you're gonna need when you're using a Chromebook. Tip number two. Tip number two is screenshots. Now, occasionally you're gonna wanna be able to take a screenshot, right? Your students definitely will wanna be able to take a screenshot. So if they're working on a slide deck of some sort and they wanna throw in a, a picture of a, something that they're looking at, they're gonna wanna be able to do a screenshot. So to take a full screenshot, you gotta use this button right here. This is the switch screen button in a Chromebook. And together with the control button, control and switch screen, it'll take a full screenshot of whatever they're looking at. Now, if you can also clip that into whatever size you want, and all you do to this switch screen button and your control button is add the shift. So shift, control, switch screen, it'll change your cursor into a little controller that will allow you to click and drag across uh, whatever size box you want to screenshot. So that is my tip number two, taking a screenshot. Okay, so tip number three. Tip number three is really a teacher tip. Are you ready for this? You're in the middle of a lesson all of your kids, and this actually goes beyond just a Chromebook, but let's say they're all on a, a device or you have small groups of them on a device and you wanna get them somewhere to do something. So for instance, if you want them all to go to uh, CNN.com, that's an easy one, not a great example. <laughs> but let's say you have a Google Doc. There's a good one. If you had a Google Doc and you wanted them to go to this URL, if you've ever seen a URL of a Google Doc, you'll know that it is impossible for them to navigate to. It's like 75 characters long. You, as the teacher, need this skill. You have to have this skill. You have to be able to create vanity URLs or shorten your URL. 
Now there's a few ways to do that. Google has their own, it's called Goo, G-O-O -O dot G-L. And if you go there right now, I'll link it below. You can just enter the long URL in there and it will shorten it down. These are case sensitive. So that creates a problem with, if you're dealing with the youngers. I, I'm not a big fan of Goo because, it, because they're, they're still kind of complicated. I use bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y and that will shorten them as well. Also case sensitive, but if you create a free account in Bitly, you can create a vanity URL. What's a vanity URL you ask? I'm so glad you asked. A vanity URL is where you can change the ending to whatever you want. So let's say that I want them to go to uh, Mr. N's Google Doc. You can create a Bitly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash Mr. N's Google Doc inside of that bit.ly and it's free. Teachers love the free, right? So that is tip number three, creating a vanity URL or shortening your URL. That's just part of it now. Let's say that you're in the middle of a lesson and you want your kids to go to that shortened URL. How are you gonna get them there? Right, these are teacher questions that we have to answer. Tip number four is full screen display. Now, I use a Chrome extension called Crafty Text. Crafty Text uh, is a Chrome extension, like I said. Once you um, add it into your Chrome browser, there'll be a little box and you, with a C and a T in it. You press that and it'll open up another box. You paste your URL in there and you hit enter and it will make it really big on your screen so that your kids can navigate to this thing. Now, here's a little pet peeve of mine that maybe you can help rid the earth of this thing. And that is the HTTP colon slash slash www. Like you don't need to put that in there anymore. Even if it's HTTP, TTPS, a secure site, when they navigate to it, it'll switch to that. You don't need to put that in there. So just cut that part out and paste it in there. Now my new teammate, Kirsten, she showed me another one that I think you're gonna love and it's called Gazaz. And it's G-Z-A-A-S. And this is not a Chrome extension, it's a website. So if you go there, and just enter, again, enter the URL that you want your kids to go to. It'll make it full screen so that your kids can see it up on the board and know exactly where to go to. So as you can see, like these tips are for teachers and or presenters when you're trying to get a, a lesson across to your kids. And I hope that you find them helpful. Tip number five. Tip number five is you're in Chrome. These are Chromebook browsers, right? They're just Chrome browsers is all a Chromebook is. You might as well take advantage of their robust Chrome store, okay? It's full of apps and extensions that can help you. My friend Nikki is a tabaholic and I'll walk into her room during the day and she'll have 50 tabs open across the top. And you know, as you get more tabs, the, the description gets really small. So you can't even tell what they are. I don't even know why she does this. There's a, there's a Chrome extension called OneTab. And all you have to do is press it and it will consolidate all of your tabs into one. And if you navigate to the OneTab page, it has all the pages that were open and then you can just click on them and open them back up. So I, I put this question out there. One of the people that answered me was my friend, Scott Bedley. And you can check out the video I had with him here. He reminded me of Noisily. Noisily, they've done studies on background noise and uh, how it helps people concentrate. And this Chrome extension is really cool. It has all these different sounds like a, a falling rain, or um, 
crashing waves or a uh, train in the distance or a campfire crackling. And you can layer all these sounds or you can just play one at a time for background noise for your class when they're, um, when they're concentrating on something. On a side note, he also started this thing called sound prompts where uh, he records, like he had one at uh, Disneyland, I think, and uh, a baseball game and fireworks show and they're just sounds, right? The sounds, little sound clips of these places. And he used those as writing prompts. How brilliant is that? You can use Noisily in that way as well. So check that one out. Another one that I have like been fascinated with this summer is called Reedy, R-E-E-D-Y. All right, so somebody else has done studies on how um, the way we read from left to right is inefficient and it slows us way down. So this, it's a Chrome extension. All you do is highlight the text on a web page that you're at and you right click with two fingers on a Chromebook and you, um, you press Reedy and it reads the, um, it displays all the words in the article in the center and it just, it just changes the word in the center. And I've gotten up to like 750 words a minute. It's amazing. I could read like full articles in 30 seconds. It's amazing. I love it. So check that one out. Another go-to, which I've been talking to, talking about for years now is called Grammarly. Grammarly, um, there's a paid version of Grammarly where it corrects your grammar. And I don't know about you, but I'm a teacher with the worst grammar ever. <laughs> so anyways, Grammarly will help you have good grammar. And who doesn't want that? So those are my top five essential Chromebook skills that every teacher should know. Number one, hand gestures. You have to know how to work your Chromebook. Number two, screenshots. It will come up if you're teaching with Chromebooks. Screenshots will come up with your students at some point. And since you know how to do it now, you'll be an expert. Number three, vanity URLs or URL shorteners. This is essential when you're teaching with any kind of device and the internet and you wanna get your kids or your uh, audience to go to a certain place. So vanity or URL shorteners, an essential skill for any teacher, for sure. Number four, what do you do with those vanity or URLs, shortened URLs? You gotta put them on the board so everybody can see them. Um, there's an extension and an uh, app that I told you about, Crafty Text or Gazaz, and those both will do the same thing and they're really like, they will help you, okay? So those are my top five essential Chromebook skills that every teacher should have. If you have any more essential skills, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you have any suggestions for future Tech Tuesdays or any questions or anything that you'd want to know about EdTech, please comment below. I'll get back to you, I promise. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you have, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, see you later.